Okay, next up is, this is church. Uh, my son will pay his Cambridge eye sling. There it is right there. We are going to feed this another red runner roach. The, most of the feedings today will be roaches. There will be a few crickets, uh, maybe a worm here or there. But hopefully we get them out here to uh, take down the prey. And while I'm doing this, I'm also going to water and, and uh, remove any boluses or anything that are in the enclosures as I, as I go through the feedings. Hopefully we'll be in the right positions to see... There we go. This one's been really feeding great since its last molt. Um, it's kind of a slow eater there for a while, but this last molt, it's been it's been really taking the prey. Uh, I think it's uh, pretty confident now on its abilities. Uh, we're only going to get an underside shot of him, but while he's eating, again, he I, I speak generically. Um, we'll get rid of some of this. Stuff and get some water into it. That's the Selmopace Cambridge Eye. This is uh, one of the three that I have. Um, the other two are small slings. Uh, and I have a, a friend that lives here that's her favorite species. So a little trip, a little water on them there is the Cambridge Eye. So I think I'm going to get a hold of her and see if she wants one of the babies. Um, I had given her my mature male, so I think she would probably appreciate having a baby that she can raise up. So we're going to move on to the two Samopaeus reduncus next. Okay, next up is um, Samopaeus reduncus. I haven't uh, not really named these two. Um, I think I have some names in 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 mind. I think. Uh, well, when I figure it out the next time, I'll, I'll let everybody know what I decide. But um, I, I do have some things in mind for him. Uh, again, we're going to go with the roach. Here is the little guy right here. We may not see this one. Um, hopefully he'll come up if the roach moves enough. I may have to coax this one a little bit. Find what I do with my little, uh, there it is. A little skewer chopstick thingy. See if we can get that roach to go down, down the burrow. And no, we're not gonna. He's going to go the opposite way, which means that if you look on the other side of the enclosure here, you can see how it's open here, in that little middle area right there. Um, in the back corner, he's got a little spot where he'll come up underneath, and also over here. You can see, let me move you guys back down again real quick. You could see how the, the funnel that he made for himself goes all the way back through and comes out over on this side too. So if the roach comes anywhere in that vicinity, um, it'll, it'll get it. So we're going to leave this as an update. If he does take it, we'll, we'll put him back on camera real quick. But uh, I want to get moving on to some of the other ones so I can do the video that I want to do uh, before I have to go to work. So we'll move on to the next Salmopaeus reduncus. Okay, here we are with uh, the second Salmopaeus reduncus in the same type of container. Um, these containers are like paint storage containers for artists. They're about five and a half inches tall. Uh, nice little containers for probably one, one to two and a half, maybe three inch slings. Um, after that, they'll have to move into something a little bit more permanent. And I'm not sure where this one's going to come from because it, it it's made. We'll just put that in there and I'll talk. It it made its it it dug. Um, I don't know where I keep putting that stupid stick, but it kind of webbed up the whole area around 
the log there. And the background here is the other Reduncus, just in case it does. There we go. See him? There he is. So he's living underneath that spot right there. Um, I've seen it up on its bark uh, at night. It does come up. Uh, let's say it does. It stays down. But I've found, uh, and I'm sure that other people have found, that uh, the Salmopeus genus, other than the pulkers, for some reason, I don't really see. Well, I do have one pulker. That's she's made something below her log, but um, they seem to like the base of the uh, cork bark and right at the ground level, but then they'll build whatever they want to build to accommodate themselves. Um, again, they're spiders. They've been here for millions of years. They know what they're doing, so I kind of just let them do their thing. I don't really force them into uh, the, the aspect of, oh, they're an arboreal, so you can only set them up arboreally with you know, minimum substrate. I like to give them a good inch and a half or so. Let them do what they want to do. Um, especially with this genus. It's it's uh, one of my favorites. So it's it's kind of cool to observe how they um, change their behaviors as they start to grow. The Cambridge Eye um, was always kind of out. And really, when it was in the 50 dram vial, you know, the, the the vials like this when it was in that it it pretty much stayed on its little piece of cork, cork bark and behind it it did very minimal webbing now that it's in the bigger enclosure it webbed that whole area in the back um you know it pulled the dirt up to kind of camouflage it so it is interesting to see how how they change and how they adapt to what they're in and their surroundings so yeah we'll move on to the next okay next up is one of the two samopaeus armenia slings you can see the guy right there. We're going to throw in a red runner. I don't, usually these guys have been eating crickets. I haven't given them a red runner in a while. We'll see what happens. Um, right now I've zoomed in on the spider. I may zoom back out so that you could see if, if it does uh, sense roach here. We'll, we'll kind of zoom down just a little bit. And while that one is fussing for a little while deciding oh yeah see it's 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 sensed it uh, the Armenias are just they're so much fun um, so much fun to watch them grow so much fun to watch them eat and again if you could see what these two have done they have cork bark uh, not a ton of it where they can you know like a tube where they can hide in because um, they were pretty small when they came in um, but yeah, they, they've dug that little tunnel burial or little uh, tube down there at the base of the tree. And that's pretty much where they stay. You'll see one of them out. The second one that'll be fed is out a little bit more often up higher than this one really ever is. And the roach has moved up to the top. So they kind of take their time. These two have been very methodical with... Uh, their feedings. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to slide this this one over and just continue filming. I'm going to go ahead and drop the roach into the second Armenia enclosure. And uh, maybe try and watch both of them at the same time. I'd like to feed all my uh, Salmopeus species in this video. I have uh, four pulkers that need to be fed. We'll get them fed and then probably cut this video and uh, just call it a Salmo Pace feeding video. Now uh, they're both, uh, this this one here is just a tad bit bigger than the other one. Uh, this one here has been a better eater overall. And if you look at the second enclosure here, right here, let me turn it just a little bit, right at the bottom here is where the spider is it made its little funnel and it stays there um, at night you'll see it come out and just wander a little bit and then when you kind of flash the light just to kind of get a better look it it does bolt so yeah well, we're not getting the action I thought we would out of these two it's been a couple weeks since they've they were fed but they didn't eat so I after a few days I took the uh, prey item back out um, I've noticed with these two, uh, especially this one, if the prey arm doesn't come down, it won't even bother. 
it waits till it comes down even though it may sense it up top it waits till it comes down and you can see how this one has webbed up top a little bit more than the other but again this one kind of stays down here where this one will come out a little bit more so we're going to slide those two back we're going to let them stay um, in the picture and I'm gonna, going to grab the pulkers okay now we're back um, looking at my records I just fed the female a few days ago so she's not going to feed and the little baby um, looks to be in primo again already uh, it's got a very shiny back end darkened up pretty good so we're going to skip the uh, feeding for that one and just feed the two males or suspected males this is Salem um, he was in the picture there I'm going to try something different with him he's never had an adult dubia before I've, he's been crickets and mainly stuff like that so we're going to see I've never tong fed him or even tempted to tong feed him either but I don't want this roach to take off on us so he hasn't molted in a while um, it doesn't really appear to be in pre-molt, but he was usually, he was on a schedule with my male Armenia. They kind of molted within weeks of each other, and my male Armenia molted a few weeks back, and Salem doesn't really look to be, based on my experience with him, to be in pre-molt at all. I'm really surprised. We'll let the, let the roach go. Where did Salem go? Salem is probably back here. There he is right there. You can see his little little spot that he made there. Those are just two um, logs that I found outside. Kind of intertwined them a little bit. And he created a little s spot for himself right where the two come together underneath the leaves. But he's generally up on the leaves all the time um, and he's usually a excellent feeder so maybe he is in pre-molt again I haven't really I, I didn't see that and I would have if, if he would have been looking like it I never would have even bothered to bring him out to put him into the video so we'll, we'll water him up here and see if we can't get that Roach to move a little bit. Gotta find my little stick again. I keep losing it. It's a good thing I have a couple of them. And we'll uh, see if we can't get that roach to do something to get Salem interested. I think if maybe it gets in front of them, we might get the attack that we're looking for. Not, don't have a very good batting average today for the Samo Pace. He's, he's definitely interested. There we go. Oh, maybe not. And this is this is uh this is the biggest meal he's ever had, so he may be testing the waters here a little bit. Trying to figure out if this is food or it's not food. And he doesn't seem to uh appreciate that dinner. We'll let him run for another minute or so now that the roach is moving more towards him if he doesn't come down we'll probably just exit this one right out of the video this is uh probably out of all of my 
tarantulas, period. I mean, I love the polkers in general, but this one in particular, I'm very fond of. Never has threat postured me, never has tried to take off, never has tried to escape. Can move very quick if he wants to. Um, Rehousing's been easy with him. Uh, I think that this enclosure will be perfectly fine for him for the entirety of his life. Uh, even his when he matures, he won't get real big. And I expect that in the next, I would say by the end of this year, maybe early next year. This may turn into a video all by himself here. He really, really can't decide what he wants to do. Let me take you guys down and then bring you closer to the bottom. Again, you'll have to excuse the enclosure sides. Some places are pretty difficult to get to to wipe down. He seems to like this spot of his toilet. Come on, buddy. He's, I mean, he'll, he'll eat the Red Runners with no issues. Um, this is the first Dubia Roach I've ever given him. Uh, he's eaten mealworms. There we go. He just needed to be sure of himself. Now he's confident. This will be uh, interesting what he does with it. If he tries to bring it up inside that spot. Or if he tries to take it up on the leaf. This could be a big long struggle. But what I found with um, the Polkers. And, and I've had this guy. Because I was never happy with what I put him in. Never happy with the way I set him up. Um, when I first got him. Um, I had him in a, in, in a tall... Not real tall, but, you know, it was probably about that high from the ground. So it was probably about five inches tall in a plastic um, rectangle shape thing with, a, you know, the square lid that kind of sealed as you pushed it down. And I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of experience with Samopaeus or the faster species. So I was kind of intimidated by him for a little while. And I hated the enclosure because uh, I could never see him. Um, the, the little decoration I put in there, he found a spot that I just couldn't see him. I wasn't sure if he was eating. Um, I mean, he was, you just didn't see it. Um, so I, I, I wanted to put him in something that I could see him grow and his last molt, I took him out of, I and I, I ended up putting him in a deli cup, the 32 ounce deli cup. And his last mold, I moved him into this. So it's been quite a while now, probably five months, six months maybe since he's molted. And this is where he's been residing. And the way I set this up is actually my favorite enclosure because I could see him anywhere. And when it wasn't webbed up, he started out in, in living in that area there with, with the log. And then he started to come up top and generally sits on the platform right above him that leaf right there he he likes that spot all the way through he likes to get up on the leaves and stay there and you'll see by the next one um, that that pulker is the same way uh, the next sound will pass pulker will be thorin another suspected male um, I have one confirmed female and two suspected males I'm pretty sure they are male and then the small little sling. So we're going to go ahead and grab Thorin and put Salem back and let him enjoy his meal. <laughs> 